Dracula's Netflix. Yes, that's correct, Alec. Netflix's Dracula is a new original series, obviously about Dracula. That was not initially on my radar. What I mean by that is, I knew they were making a Dracula show, I knew that it was going to come out at some point in 2019, I didn't know when, until my buddy Zane had said that it had already come out and he recommended that I watch it. And I did. And it's really good. So it is a bit of an odd series though. What I mean by that, it's not odd like it's bad, it's really really good. It's just the way it's told is a little wonky. So there are three episodes within the series. The thing is, they're each an hour and a half long, so it honestly feels more like a movie trilogy as opposed to four episodes of a show. There are only two characters that appear in every episode of the show. Um, Agatha von Helsing and, of course, Dracula. And yes, I said Agatha von Helsing. In this show, Helsing is a nun which was a really interesting twist on it. Still extremely intelligent, like very much I want to understand the undead and how to defeat them and whatnot and like save humanity from them almost, but a nun, which I thought was a really neat twist on the whole thing. It is really well done. Like I said, each episode is honestly its own thing. The first one is more of a story being recounted. It's Jonathan Harker t explaining how he got to where he is at the beginning of the episode. Episode 2 is basically Dracula telling Helsing how he managed to completely massacre an entire ship. And then episode 3 is pretty much a real-time telling, where it jumps forward 123 years and follows Dracula in the modern day with him going toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Helsing's descendant. So, each episode... They're all good. Three, though, is where it gets the weirdest. In episode one, a lot of the editing and a lot of the way that it's being told feels very shaky and frantic to reflect how the teller is feeling. In episode two, there's a very calm feeling. It's like calm, but with a sense of dread for what's going to happen to these passengers. But uh, like, you know what's coming, so it like is a calm nature, if that makes sense. And then you have Episode 3, where there are so many characters that can get introduced so quickly that it feels off. It's the best way that I can explain it. Yeah, it's much more challenging to explain than that in all reality, but that's the best way that I can explain it. The show, the, the casting on the show is really, really good. Um, the guy that they have playing Dracula, he always feels like he's in control, and he's like knows what's going on and will be like in charge of the situation um, and how it's going to like he knows how it's going to play out and how the situation will end. It's a really really neat way of doing it. The actress that plays Agatha, Agatha doesn't really know what's going on for most of it, and so this like I'm going to figure this out. I don't know what's going on right now, but I will find out and I will control this. I I personally liked um, all the actors portray how their character is supposed to feel really, really well. I don't feel like there's a ton for me to talk about with this show without getting into spoilers. Honestly, all I can truly say about this show is that I thought it was a lot of fun. And cons that I want to get into, I wish this show was at least one episode longer. Like after the time jump, I wish there was another episode to kind of flesh out. So at one point in the final episode, Dracula gets released because a lawyer agency that has been working, that has been representing him since the 1800s, er, yeah, 1800s, I wish I was making that up, gets him released from the holding cell that he is in because he has rights, obviously. He then meets this girl that another character that we have met, Jack, is in love with and starts feeding on her for three months. And there is a three month time jump at that point where we come back, she is about to get married, apparently hasn't talked to this character Jack in that time, and Helsing's descendant is dying. Like, in the hospital, dying. I don't know. I kind of wish that more had explanation had been given, like, for that, um, and, like, how it got specifically there. It's not needed. It's still good. I just kind of wish we had gotten more, mostly because I kind of just wanted more. The ending is also really wonky to me. I am not personally the biggest fan of it. My friend Zane, he actually really liked it. I personally didn't. And that's because the way it ends felt very... 
I want to say anticlimactic, but that's not the only thing that felt off. It's hard to explain, but it felt off to me at least. And so, I don't know. I definitely thought that it could have been better. That's, that's all I really have to say. Um, for me, I do think that this show rolls a solid 16. It is highly entertaining. It's a lot of fun, and I do recommend watching it. Just uh, the weird pacing at certain parts and the ending makes it come down a little bit for me. That's honestly all I really have. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, links are going to be in, to both those are going to be in the description. And subscribe if you feel so inclined and want to support my channel. All of those would be greatly appreciated. But that's all I really have to say about this one, guys. As always, peace out.